Hey QD Coders, Michael L. Perry here. There are two concepts in mathematics that software can benefit most from. One of those is partial order. So what is partial order? Let's define that by talking about three different examples. These are different examples of sets that we can order in a couple of different ways. One of those will be a total order, and the other one will be a partial order. The first example that we'll talk about is words. We can put words together in alphabetical order. So whether they're far apart, like the word cut before the word invigorating, or whether they're close together, like full-blown before fully. Listing words in alphabetical order allows you to quickly find them in a long list. You can always tell, given any two words, which one came before the other. It's a total order. But there's a different way that we could order the words together. Let's suppose that instead of alphabetical order, we use the isIn operator in order to define a relationship between words. So the word at is in the word cat, and cat is in catalog. This operator is transitive, so you could infer from these two relations that at is in catalog. The opposite of the is in operator is the contains operator. So I could say that cat is in catalog, or I could say that catalog contains cat. You can draw a graph of all the words that catalog contains, putting the smaller words at the top and the larger words below. This graph would embody the transitive property of the is in contains relation. But some words in this graph are not related. So take a look at the word at and the word log. Can you say that at is in log? Or could you say that at contains log? No, neither one of these are true. So these two words are not ordered under the is in contains relation. That means the is in contains relation is a partial order. Alphabetical is a full order. Any two words can be related to one another in alphabetical order, but contains and is in represent a partial order. Let's take a look at another example. Let's go with the good old familiar numbers. Now, everyone's familiar with the total order defined on the positive integers by the less than greater than relation. So this relation is transitive. If three is less than seven and seven is less than 12, then you can infer that three is less than 12. But this order is also total. Given any two positive integers, I can tell you which one is less and which one is greater. There's another way that we can order the positive integers, and that's with multiples and factors. I can draw the graph of all the factors and the multiples, and that graph would embody the transitive property of this relation. If 2 is a factor of 6 and 6 is a factor of 12, then 2 must be a factor of 12. We can evaluate our set with respect to each of these relations, the less than greater than relation that defines a total order, and the factor multiple relation that defines a partial order. Take any two positive integers, say 7 and 12. You could either say 7 is less than 12 or 7 is greater than 12. So certainly 7 is less than 12. We can answer this question for these two positive integers. And indeed for any two positive integers I can answer the less than greater than question. But now let's take a look at the factor multiple relation. Is 7 a factor of 12 or is 7 a multiple of 12? Well, neither one is true. And so for the factor multiple relation, we have a partial order. Now let's take a look at a third example. This one is, I think, pretty interesting, and it's events, things that occurred in a story. So let's take a couple of different stories from one of my favorite authors, Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, in one of the stories, we'll say The Pit and the Pendulum, it's told very chronologically. First, he discovers that he's tied up. Second, he discovers that there's a pendulum swinging above his head. Third, he uses some cheese in order to escape from his bonds. Then fourth, he finds himself at the edge of a large pit, and so on and so on. This story is told chronologically. Every event came either before or after every other event. Chronological order defines a total order of events. But now let's take a look at another one of the stories from Edgar Allan Poe, The Fall of the House of Usher. This story is told in a much more free-flowing style. 
where each of the events either caused another event or was because of another event. So the caused because of relationship is how we define the events in this story. One of those events is that a man sees the house of his childhood friend. And that is because he received a letter from his childhood friend asking him to come for a visit. So we've got those two events that are related to each other causally. Later in the story, two events happen. One, the man reads a poem, and two, Usher's wife dies. Neither one of those two events caused the other, so they are not causally related to one another. But they did happen in a certain chronological order. Later, when they see the ghost of the uh, departed wife, they think that that is a manifestation of the poem, and they also know that that is because she has passed away. Of course, what really happened is the wife of Usher succumbed to tuberculosis, and they just thought that she was dead, and they were letting their fancy run away with them with this poem and then seeing her vision. But from the perspective of the narrator, he thinks that the vision is caused both by the death and by the poem. So in the story, we've got some events that are causally related and some that are not related. So causality is a partial order of events. So far, we've looked at three different sets, words, numbers, and events in a story. And then we've ordered them with either a total order or a partial order. We get to choose based on how we want to use that set. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at some sets inside of software and see how we can totally order or partially order those sets and what the ramifications of that choice are going to be. So, stick around.